Clinical Additive Manufacturing for Medical Applications, CARMED, is a project designed to improve medical treatment through the manufacture of patient-specific implants directly in the hospital. Following severe accidents, patients are taken to hospital and immediately examined by computer tomography. Frequently, injuries include fractures to the skull, jaw and rib bones. Presently, commercial implants for such applications are adequate but not optimal. Their delivery is time-consuming, expensive and can lead to healing complications from inadequate fit. Our aim is to address such injuries through the manufacture of patient-specific implants from high-performing thermopolymers. Similarly, commercial plates used to stabilise the humerus or rib fractures must be bent to fit the natural twist of the anatomy and can lead to deformation post-surgery. Our aim is to manufacture both patient-specific plates and scaffolds based off finite element models for metals and ceramics. However, these aims can only be achieved through the collaboration of our international partners from both academia and industry. The CAMED project is based on a robust and tight-knit network of experts in the fields of image processing, material science, 3D printing technologies, biology, as well as clinicians and experts in process development. To implement our aims, a 3D printing facility was established directly in the hospital. However, 3D printers alone aren't sufficient to produce implants and plates that meet safety and quality guidelines. A process chain must be developed to optimise patient data processing, additive manufacturing, and implementation into clinical routine within the confines of the hospital. We aim to optimise specific elements of implant manufacture within this process chain. Finally, additive manufacturing processes must be integrated into standardised clinical protocols. And a robust quality management system must be established to allow for the routine additive manufacture of high quality implants, plates, models and tools. Now we will take you deeper into our implementation approach. We start by processing patient data from computer tomography images. Afterwards, the data is segmented through thresholding techniques, extracting bone from surrounding soft tissues. Finally, the bone is transferred as a 3D model, cleaned, pseudonymized, and converted into printable file format. If bone is missing, bespoke algorithms can be used to fill lesions semi-automatically. Similar techniques are used to generate models for the thorax. However, its dynamic behaviour adds further complexity. Hence, we have attained donor thoracises for fundamental performance testing. Measurements are recorded by bespoke rigs. CT images from the donors are used to develop finite element models. A thorax simulation is created by modelling each rib vertebral joint with special elements. Allocating stiffness values to those attained experimentally. Finite element models are also used to develop patient-specific metal plates, matching the natural twist of the humerus. Based on patient data analysis, different 3D printing methodologies can be approached. In the 2019 founded Medical Printing Lab, we look at polymer-based fused filament fabrication.
polymer filaments are melted and deposited onto the build platform, layer by layer. A 3D printed part arises as the build platform moves along. We have machines with the capabilities to process both low and high temperature thermoplastics, such as PEAK. After post-processing, the mechanical properties of FFF cranial implants are then compared to freeformer manufactured implants. The plastic freeformer uses a granule-based AM technology to purpose a variety of polymers into 3D components. Thermoplastic granules are filled into the printer Meanwhile, the job file, containing both the geometry and build parameters, are prepared by Software Suite. Adjustments are made as necessary prior to the 3D model being transferred to the printer. With this printing process, implants with different mechanical properties can be manufactured. Our 3D printing technologies are not just limited to polymers. Ceramics can also be purposed by lithography. Ceramic powder is combined with a photocurable binder and then cured by UV light. The green part is then removed, cleaned, and thermally treated to remove binder and densify the structure. This results in a perfectly fitting implant. For humerus and rib plates, metals and metallic glasses are purposed through selective laser sintering technologies. Respective powders are applied as a thin layer onto the build platform and subsequently fused together by laser beam. Once completed, post-processing is applied, including surface optimization treatment. Printed specimens then undergo a sequence of conventional sterilization steps. This includes washing and autoclaving to assess whether these processes have an effect on the mechanical performance of our implants. Surface roughness of the implant is characterised by precise microscopy methodologies. A printed implant must replicate the mechanical behaviour of the natural tissue it replaces. To test performance, a bespoke, non-destructive, destructive testing rig has been developed. For non-destructive testing, the implant is placed into the device and a cyclic load is applied. Implant stiffness and deformity are recorded. Destructive tests determine the energy required to cause ultimate failure during impact. To verify attained results, additional standardised mechanical testing is performed. To ISO 178 standard bending and ISO 1792 Sharpie impact. Micro-CT is used to assess the internal structure of the implants and explain potential mechanical instabilities such as voids. An implant must not trigger a negative immune response, such as inflammation or cell death. 
Hence, biocompatibility studies using human bone cells are performed to test their survival relative to the material of the printed sample. Prior to live animal trials, we assess the effects of our implants on living organotypical bone cultures. Rat tibia is removed, sliced and placed into culture, where it replicates the normal characteristics of intact bone. Cuts to the bone slices can mimic injuries and healing procedures can be comprehended. Using immunohistochemistry, we can assess the size of the cut and the reactions of adjacent cells, hence assessing the different effects materials have on bone metabolism. Live animal trials are performed on rats. Ceramic scaffolds are implanted into both cranial bone and tibia. High fidelity grinding machines fabricate thin cross sections ready for micro CT analysis. Time dependent bone ingrowth and healing processes are then assessed. Clinical process chains are then simulated to implement 3D printing into the clinical routine. Once all of these processes have been completed, clinical trials are planned with belief that the 3D printed implants will significantly improve patient-specific treatments in the near future. <laughs>